coming to a topic called John Rawls. John Rawls uh, is not very well known, at least not in India. Uh, globally also, uh, few people, but in 1970s, he is a philosopher of America, again a very sensitive person who, you know, was brought up in America and surprisingly, if you read his theories, you know, he does not agree with whatever is happening in America. And uh, in 1970, he wrote a seminal book called The Theory of Justice, in which he explored ki what is just and what is right and what is to be done. So he started with the concept of a just society. And I will extend it further to what should be a company or a bank. So that is my point. But to give a background, I am coming to John Rawls. Now in John Rawls, he said that everybody has his point of view. And that is why we everybody takes that point of view and works on that point of view and agrees to something or disagrees to something. So if one were to make a just society, what should that just uh, society be like. Now remember, John Rawls was born in America in somewhere in 1930s. He saw his brothers go to war, uh, the Second World War. He saw tremendous poverty in America, uh, in the community around where he was staying in and around. Uh, you know, he saw a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you can say, atyachar on the uh, black Americans and descended and he thought that this is not a just society you understand and then that is what went into his thinking I'll come to the next slide as an example this is my slide not John Rawls so uh, this is something which we all know this is a cake now uh, wo cake to Shres ne bana hai uska size bhi usne hi decide kiya maine bola ek cake le lo usko kato aur ek knife dikha do bas usne bana diya kuch so, now you understand that this cake has made a piece of cake. Now, you understand how many pieces can be made in this size cake. Four. And? Five. Six. Let us say six. Six pieces can be made. Now, we all have a party at our home. You understand? How are the cake? This is my example. Huh? I am trying to, if I go through theory of justice, it will take me two days. But if a piece of cake, how do we distribute it at a party? If there are six people, we will make this size of piece. If there are 12 people, half of this. 24 people, one more cake. Isn't it? But something like that. Why? John Rawls says it is not because that everybody should get it equally. John Rawls says it is cut that way because you don't know which piece you will get. Uh, not the one who is cutting, but you can say, everybody will try and get the bigger cake. So I am telling you John Rawls' theory very, very simply. So what he says that if you were like he has a concept called wheel of uh, uh, ignorance in which he says let us imagine you are in an intelligible state in a womb in a mother's womb or something like that you don't know whom you are going to be born to you don't know if you are going to be born a Hindu you are going to be born a Muslim you know you are going to be born this that 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 or any other I am talking about some Indian example there could be, you know, any, you could be born in Africa, you could be born in uh, Sweden or this or that. What kind of a society would you be wanting to be born into? The answer is the piece of cake. That means you would be wanting, just correct me if I am wrong, you would be wanting to be born in a society which has got a good justice system. Right? You would be wanting to be born in a country which has equal liberties and opportunities. Right? You would be born in a country which has good health care. You would be wanting to be born in a country which has good education. You would be wanting uh, to be born in a country which has a good 
standard of living. And not only that, you would be wanting to be born in a country which has less inequality. You would be want to be born in a just society. You understand? And that is what all societies should aim at. So basically, he cast away all this, uh, you know, pardas of socialism, capitalism, and this and that. And John Rawls propounded this theory, which has been started. John, this was in 1970s. And if you see after 70s, this started seeping in. Aplala's impact will be more in the next 50 years and 100 years. And it is by people who have read him very clearly know that this is the future. This is the man who has, you know, this is not like Marx. This is not like John Adams or something like that. This is a, this is, this is not like Hebel or Nietzsche or something. This is a man who talks sense, who talks, uh, you know, uh, common sense. And this is what a just society. Today we are not a just world. You are seeing what is happening in Ukraine. You are seeing everywhere civil liberties are being trampled upon or this thing. All that is there because this is not seeped in. But it has started seeping in. People have started questioning the impacts of industrialization or you know talking about climate change and this thing. This came after John Rawls. And, uh, you know, people are taking into cognizance, ki, is this what we want in our society? Do we want only a few rich and others living in poverty? Do we want industrialization at the cost of health hazards or, or you know, a fine balance? All this thing is now coming into debate and discourse. Not in our country, we are still at some other level, uh, but <laughs> it will come when the time comes. But uh, ultimately, John Rawls is seeping into all kinds of thinking. And this will increasingly happen in the years to come. Now, taking that theory forward, but you will understand the thought process. Because a lot of my, when I read uh, John Rawls and other things, my mind started thinking in a different way. And all my questions, some of my questions at least, you know, got started. Then my clarity started coming. We are thinking about privatization. Is this the answer? Will this raise new questions? You understand? So all these things started coming in. So now I am applying John Rawls and a just society and a piece of cake to a bank. Or rather, to uh, this thing. Don't look at the right hand side. Ata me sangitla don't look mandla tites bhakti. No, seriously, that is for later. First is the left hand side. If you see, if you look at the bank, who are the either a chukla expectations of stakeholders, they are the stakeholders. Uh, the stakeholders are for the shareholders. The customers, in our case, they are the. I have a chart. This is not related to theory of justice. This is related to what an organization should be. So, this is what our customers, our customers, borrowers, and depositors. Right. Then there are the employees. They are also stakeholders. And society. Why? Because we are a cooperative institution. That is why we included society. But the world over, society is increasingly being impact on society, of your business on society is being thought about, you know, whether we are creating toxic products, what is, uh, you know, the carbon footprint of our business, and all that is coming into relevance. If you see the right side, the society and the employees, uh, you understand, that was more or less the drive and focus of socialism. You understand? And if you see the left side, that is the shareholders, and not really the customers, uh, shareholders and that to majority shareholders was the drive of capitalism. Crony capitalism only takes care of the main shareholder. A good capitalist society will take care of all shareholders. You understand? Now, uh, if we see extreme forms like what happened in 
communist West Bengal or something is a total focus only on employees at the cost of, uh, you understand uh, the, this thing, shareholders contribute to the capital. They are also, they should expect a return. So now here, if you see, these are the stakeholders. And let us apply John Rawls. And let us say, I don't know who I am. Okay. In the sense, just as John Rawls said, I don't know where I will be born. So let us say, I don't know if I am a shareholder, or a customer, or an employee, or I am the society, then which kind of a bank should I be? You are understanding where I am coming to. Now, if I were to be born a shareholder, I would want my money to be in a bank which gives me decent and good return. It has to be well run, well managed. It has to be well run and managed in the long run. You understand? Okay. I am not talking about, uh, you know, the majority shareholder. That kind of capitalism is a different kind. That, that is not the topic of my discussion here. The other one is a customer. Whom would you be? You want to be with a, this, that, that bank understands you. As a depositor, your money is safe. Uh, as advance, you know that you will be listened to, you, your difficulties will be understood, you will be appreciated. That is what, if I were born a customer, is what I would be thinking about. If I were born an employee, I would feel that, I yes, I will be given growth opportunities here, I will be respected, I will be, uh, uh, you understand, uh, uh, in all ways considered a stakeholder and I will, uh, you know, feel good to be an employee of this bank. And society, as I said, because that is important for us because we are a cooperative. Now, if you, this is, if you imagine yourself to be one, okay? If you imagine yourself to be one particular unit, your thinking will go for a toss. If you think like a shareholder, you will not care about the other parts. If you think only like an employee, your concern will not be like that other. So, until, you see, you see the, then again the first two shareholder and customer, uh, or rather only shareholder will is a capitalist thought. The, uh, on the right hand side you will have a socialist thought. But cooperative is a principle which encourages all four thoughts. That the shareholder is the owner, real owner, unit shareholder. We all are shareholders. We are all equal owners. Not that I own more shares or Mr. Sakharkar own more shares. We all own an equal number of shares. Uh, let us say. Ah, okay, nah. So, or you all, whoever is a shareholder, all are shareholders. You understand? Customers, employees, society, cooperative is an institution which has unfortunately not performed in many cases, but where it has performed, like Saraswat Bank or Amol, is because there is a fine balance from all the stakeholders. Please understand. And how has it happened? Then I am going to the right hand side. It has happened because of management expectations from employees to achieve expectations of shareholders and customers. You understand? So here, the role of uh, the role of the executives comes in. The role of executives is to understand that the management wants something to be done because it has to take care of the stakeholders. Not only of one shareholder, that, but the bank has to be safe, sound, stable. That is what we have done over the period of years. You also have to executive see that you are making good progress and generating profits so that the shareholders are rewarded, the employees are also rewarded. You have to bring in that kind of culture. Amul has a great culture. You, if you have seen even their stakeholder, the adetana te fatfati pe jake dud le jarayye wo mahilaye that kind of a thing. So they are taking care of society, employees, this, that, that. So this is what, and so here the role of executive is very important. And I am putting all this in perspective 
because as an organization we must know what we do what we stand for what we are going to do a industrialist who is a major shareholder will not talk like me he will only talk about uh, you know what he is going to earn i want to do i want to take care of so as a chairman i am also a shareholder but my job would be to take care of all these stakeholders equally that includes the so the initiatives that we take social initiatives you see saraswat bank to be always the first bank to rush out whenever there is a calamity or this thing uh, or this thing because we are a very conscious organization but in the long term let me tell you maybe not now 5 10 20 no we don't know maybe 50 or 100 years or later god knows this whole system is failing you understand average incomes world over are not going up disparity is uh, widening all this is happening we are running a institution of tomorrow today we are running a responsible just uh, rolls uh, contract that that kind of a institution today and we are doing it beautifully and we do not even know it